We are here today to thank and salute you, the, the, basically the grant recipients. Grants enrich our scholarly pursuits, help our students achieve dreams they did not know were even possible, and focus our expertise on solving problems that we confront in our society. I hope you will take the time to uh, watch the PowerPoint and look over the program to see some of our recipients, of some of our grant recipients, and more importantly, to kind of, if you do get the chance, take the time to talk to them and ask them about their projects and a lot of the wonderful work they're doing. Finally, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Cole and Vice President Zins for the support for the grants program at Queensboro and add my congratulations and thanks to all of you here tonight. At this point, I would like to introduce the president, <laughs> Dr. Call, Diane, please. Hello. Tonight we, we acknowledge you as amazing colleagues who have done great work to craft applications that match what we hope to achieve and, and our funding sources. And I can appreciate how much work goes into that, how many times there are things adjusted. And it's a tribute to all of you for your persistence, your inventiveness, um, and your commitment to really securing funds that help carry out our strategic plan, the things that you do as faculty members, as mentors, to help our students really become very active in their learning and, and give them the edge when it comes to going on to university, securing scholarships, et cetera. Uh, Queensborough has a, a great reputation for an extraordinary faculty. And it is well-deserved, well-deserved, and I, I think we are so very proud to be part of this community with you. Uh, you've all played a role in the success of every student who's completed here, who's gone on, who's really done great things. And for those of us who remain here, and many of you obviously have been here for a while, we know that our students come back and, and thank you and share with you things that have been accomplished because of what the faculty here has done. So our grant programs are, are truly very important. We, we really develop very innovative things. We do cutting edge research, which is uh, the envy of many, many institutions, certainly in the City University of New York and of national repute as well. Uh, it requires a great deal of work what you do and you know that it's not the dollar amount because it really doesn't matter. We happen to have very um, well-funded grants and we have others that are starter grants. The PSC CUNY have really launched many of the work of our faculty. And I think we had something like 56 or something. I think we have 56 PSC CUNY grants. That's extraordinary. And it, it really speaks to the caliber of, of our faculty here and of the ability of this institution to come together and work collaboratively to achieve these things. So I really congratulate you. What you do obviously advances your own research, but what you also do helps our students understand the possibilities that they face, that they can discover a new way of, of learning, a new way of thinking, and perhaps new careers, and certainly new goals. It's really hard not to be inspired as a student when you're working with faculty and staff such as yourselves. And so we have a great deal of, of change and, and innovation in our curricula, in our support services that have just been expanded and expanded, and certainly in our high impact practices of which we're very, very proud. You know, that grant began with an $8,000 grant for service learning. And now uh, it is nationally known and our faculty present all over the country and beyond. And our students benefit. We have that hard data that suggests student, students who do engage in these wonderful high impact practices do stay here, do succeed academically and do complete a degree. And it's really, really important to do that. So the grants program here is really the faculty and staff of Queensborough Community College on behalf of our students. So we are very grateful. Uh, we have superstars in every single department and 
I think, you know, some of you are here tonight, so many of you uh, have other obligations. You're teaching, you're doing all kinds of things. Uh, but I do want to say you're seeing many of the grants highlighted in both your program and in terms of the video uh, loop on the screen. It's, it's amazing that we can achieve an NEH grant that's one of 12 in the country, that we can achieve the NASA grant that Dr. Chantal Damas achieved in the, she's from the Department of Physics. Is Chantal here? She may be teaching, I'm not no, sure. That's a $750,000 grant, uh, which will, uh, only one of, I believe, five in the country. It's extraordinary. And I think the spirit is, is even more impressive because almost every single one of the grants that we have here involves students. Students as research um, partners, believe it or not, it's kind of amazing. And students in the work with service learning with our community organizations, I think so much of that really makes it distinctive. I mean, the, the quality and the accomplishments of achieving, achieving these grants is one thing. But, but what they represent is, is just extraordinary and it, it really marks us, Queensboro, as a very special institution. Uh, I don't have to tell you, your, your work um, has led to student success. We have students doing undergraduate research at Gosh, Vanderbilt, Princeton, UConn, Stony Brook. We probably have, that's CUNY East, by the way. It's called Queensboro East, actually. So many of your science students are there. And, and it shows in just the general accomplishments of students, for instance, the nursing department and its ability to generate not just very talented nurses, but, but nurses who take the state exam and succeed enormously and achieve the highest pass rate um, in CUNY, better than anybody else in CUNY, better than Columbia, better than NYU, better than Binghamton, and they all have obviously four-year RNs, but our students are very good. Now our guest tonight, our Executive Vice Chancellor, Dr. Rita Rabinowitz, uh, was a provost at Hunter, and so I kind of let her off the hook by not bragging too much. Uh, we have a dual joint with Hunter, but we have students who graduate in 18 months in our dual joint when they go on. But all of that is possible because of the work to secure the seed money, the larger implementation grants that you all have achieved. And I really salute you. I thank you on behalf of, of your colleagues at Queensboro, on behalf of the students of Queensboro, who will really go on and succeed and know that you were part of that journey for them. So thank you all and enjoy uh, learning more about your colleagues uh, across disciplines. That's a big thing here, collaboration across disciplines. So I'm glad you'll have a chance to relax a little bit tonight and enjoy and be proud of yourselves because we're surely that. So thank you. Thank you, Diane. At this point, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Vita Rubinowitz. Dr. Rubinowitz is Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost at the City University of New York. Since her service in this role began in July 2015, she has worked to advance university priorities related to college readiness, degree completion, and workforce development, as well as performance management and assessment, among other areas. She has also established CUNY's Office of Faculty Affairs, which aims to work collaboratively with colleagues across university to ensure that faculty are supported and recognized for their essential contributions to students, the university, and their disciplines. For nearly a decade prior to that, she was the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Hunter College, where she spent 47 years as a dedicated faculty member and also served as co-founder and co-director of the Gender Equity Project. Please welcome Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Vita Werwinowitz. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Good afternoon, colleagues. I want to thank President Call for inviting me. I love to be at Queensboro. I think it's the prettiest CUNY campus. And, um, and the people here are indeed special. I agree with President Call. I want to thank also the team in the Office of Grants and Sponsored Programs for organizing today's wonderful event. Finding funding for research today is not easy. 
I don't have to tell you. It requires perseverance, resourcefulness, excellence, and a fundamental commitment to your ideas and your goals. This is true at every college and university across the country, but it is particularly true at CUNY's community colleges, where you serve an enormous and extraordinary range of students and where your teaching and service responsibilities are truly great. Colleagues, I know it seems like we're asking more of you all the time. Teach using best practices, teach with technology, mentor more outside of the classroom, provide experiential learning opportunities for our students, serve on committees for the department, for the college, for the university increasingly. And along the way, make sure you publish, you get grants, you get promoted. The faculty lives these days are trying, we understand. Please know that we see what you do. We deeply appreciate all that you do. <clears throat> and, and you heard it from your president and your provost, we never forget that you were trained to be scholars. You are trained to be scholars who aspire to contribute to your disciplines, to this borough, to this college, to the city, and to the world. And that is what we are celebrating today. Here at QCC, this has been an outstanding year for faculty accomplishments by all measures. But in terms of grant totals, you have collectively brought more than $4.6 million to the college in a tough year. That is astonishing. And you have supported not only your, only research, your own research with this, but your grants are bringing opportunities to your students. As President Call said, in the most recent round of PSC CUNY grant applications, there were 64 submissions from Queensboro. 64 submissions, and you won well over 50. Not 50%, over 50. Was it 56, Diane? Okay, 56 of those grants. I will tell you that that percentage compares with any college at CUNY. It's particularly meaningful because these submissions came from every corner of the college, from biological sciences and geology to art and design from mathematics and computer sciences to the social sciences. Faculty work addressed critical issues related to urban life, educational outcomes, economic forecasting, cultural heritage, among other areas. In addition to research initiatives, which are raising the profile of your college, make no mistake about that, and they are advancing your individual careers, Many of you have brought millions of dollars to contribute to the pedagogical experiences of QCC students. President Call mentioned the outstanding example of the physics department, where Professor Chant Chantel Damas received three quarters of a million dollars from, the, from NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, for a program that will allow QCC students to study space weather. You are, you are one of just four community colleges nationwide to win that prestigious award. And it will bring new STEM courses that will enrich the STEM experience for all of your students. The chemistry department is another area where faculty have had outsized success securing funding for meaningful research. I know of Professor Paris Foronas, Foronas who has mentored several students who won the renowned Jack Kent Cook Transfer Scholarship. And last summer, eight QCC chemistry students received funding and placements for NSF-funded internships. These internships are life-changing. I learned today that um, Professor Ursula 
Golubuska in, again, biological sciences and geology. Something wonderful is going on in that department that um, Professor Golubuska shared in the 2016 Breakthrough Prize, an international prize honoring achievement in fundamental physics, life sciences, and mathematics. Simran Kaur in the same department received a Fulbright for academic and profession, professional excellence that promotes ped, uh, pedagogy in the sciences. Queensboro has also been, and President Cole alluded to this, Queensboro has also been at the forefront of ongoing sustained initiatives that are gathering attention through the region and in the country. For example, BTEC, the business technology early, early college high school, is thriving in its second year. Queensboro faculty are indispensable in this partnership with New York City Department of Education and SAP Inc., which is giving high school students a running start for success in college programs and tech industry careers. Queensboro's nursing program is legendary. Again, I'm glad that President Call mentioned it, but I want you to hear it from me. We know in CUNY what a gem this program is. You have New York region's highest pass rates on licensing exams year after year. Um, beating Columbia, beating you know all the CUNY schools, of course, but also beating Ivy League schools. How do you do it? I don't know. But I will say, touring the nursing facilities here, as I did shortly after I was appointed, I got to see not only world-class facilities, but a world-class faculty. This, your nursing program, is also supported by grants that your faculty have received. Pathways to Nursing, funded by the Health Resources and Service Administration Division of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, aims to increase the number of qualified nurses from diverse and disadvantaged backgrounds, particularly Latino students who pursue nursing degrees. And, and, and again, you are launching these students into fantastic careers. Another program, Partners Aligned Toward Higher Education and Nursing, is funded by a grant, a New York State Education Perkins grant, and promotes a transition of students to baccalaureate programs through du dual and joint degree programs, including with Hunter College, York, and the CUNY School of Professional Studies. The students of Queensboro are so fortunate to have you in their lives. And the university is lucky to have faculty with your level of dedication, enthusiasm, and competence, working hard every day. In closing, I just want to say two things. One is about the role of college leadership in your success. Because President Call and Provost Marchese can't say these things about themselves. But I will say that President Call's dedication to this college over four decades is nothing short of astonishing. Her approach to the presidency is obviously richly informed by her background in higher education, her leadership there, her many years as a faculty member here, her time as provost before becoming president, and her pride in this institution shines through everywhere. Your provost, an engineer and geophysicist, is an active scholar to this day. And Paul, I think that informs your understanding of the importance of a research pro profile. You don't know me yet, but as Paul said, I am an old CUNY hand. I have been in this system since 1978. I love this system. And I am very proud of my steadfast support of faculty as scholars, artists and practitioners, as well as teachers, mentors, and citizens. I want your ideas for how we can help you reach even higher levels of scholarship and contribution. Um, tomorrow, as many of you know, the Chancellor's Research Fellowship that I hope um, many of you will apply for. Those proposals are due. We, the chancellor is thrilled 
to uh, make this opportunity possible. But I would love to hear from you about more ideas to support the scholarship of this aspiring group. Again, it's a pleasure to be associated with you, and thank you for inviting me. Best of luck. Thank you, Vida. This concludes the formal program. Uh, so please eat, drink, interact with each other, talk to each other, and we look forward to more wonderful grant opportunities and applications, and uh, enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>